In today's video, your goal is to lose body fat. You're going from looking like this to looking like this, or one of my other clients who's recently gone from looking like this to looking like this, and nothing's working. And I'm gonna tell you how to fix it. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Rebella from ProPhysique.com, and today's video comes to you from right here on my Instagram direct message. Guys, I love getting direct messages from you. I love hearing from you. I love helping you. If you want to leave a comment in the video below, I can answer your questions there. But if you're looking for me to do a video, go to my Instagram direct message, hit follow and ask me your questions. What I'd like to address today is a situation that I see all the time. I've been consistent for three weeks and my weight has not moved. What am I doing wrong? I work out on an empty stomach. Should I eat breakfast in the morning before I work out to get the results? 38 years old, played pro basketball. Should come easy and natural for me. Here's my workout split, getting seven to 10,000 steps a day, 1800 to 2100 calories a day. And you're very welcome. So this is the very common thing that I see among those that are attempting to lose weight or lose some body fat. And I want to first tell you that you might not be doing anything wrong. The thing that I love here is that you understand your calories, you understand your activity, and you understand what maybe just missing something. So this is what we as coaches do. And if you're looking for a coach, that's what we at Pro Physique do. I have the best staff of coaches in the entire world, and we're going to set up a free consultation for anyone that wants to get better, lose body fat, build muscle. I'll put a link that's the first link in the comments below to set up a free consult. But for today's video, what I want to talk about is what we most commonly see and what I commonly see as someone like this young lady who would come to me and say, hey, what do I need to do? First things first, fat loss is not always represented on the scale. And I think most of us get on the scale every morning because I ask this question of my clients and we see the number on the scale isn't changing and we think we're not making progress. But fat loss is not just a representation of the scale. Our bodies are mostly water. So as we are fluctuating between adding muscle, losing body fat, the water in our body might actually be the same. You might actually have more muscle and less body fat, but weigh the same. But because you're only trusting one measurement to tell you if you're making progress, you realize that's right. You don't think you're making any progress. And what does this do? This makes you say, well, what's the point? Why am I doing all these steps? Why am I tracking my calories if I'm not making progress? And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy of you don't make progress because instead of not having the ice cream at the end of the day, or instead of saying no to the two beers that you might've said no to because you were making progress, you say, what's the point? I'm just gonna have these couple extra calories. And guess what? It doesn't take a lot of calories to prevent you from losing body fat. You said here something that's also important. So you talked about your calories being in a 300 calorie range. So we'll get to that closer to the end of the video. But what I want you to start doing right now is I want you to start tracking some other things, okay? Not just your weight. And sometimes this can be something that's very eye-opening for people. Take pictures, okay? I have my clients set their phone on record, right? And on a tripod using a window with some natural light. Turn to the front, turn to the back. What you'll notice when you do these pictures, probably you're not going to be happy with them, but you can do screenshots and you can compare them week to week. And the first time I ever dieted down, I realized I hadn't lost a lot of weight, but what had completely changed was my body fat. And if I didn't have pictures of my back, I wouldn't have known it because for weeks and weeks, I was only losing body fat that was not visible to me in the mirror. It was all coming off my back and I could literally see my spine showing more the lower back fat was coming off and I could see the shape of my back changing, but the scale wasn't changing much. So I think a big one for all of us that are into this is focus on things that aren't just related to the scale. My favorites are the pictures, taking some measurements, right? You know, you can get some measurements around the areas of your body that are more likely to lose body fat, like the thighs, the waist, the hips, the glutes, but then also pay attention to the mirror. Pay attention to how your clothing fits. You know, we get so used to wearing our clothing that we might not pay attention to it, but you might put a shirt on one day and be like, well, that feels a little different. That's important. Likewise, when you walk past a mirror or you're brushing your teeth and you see a little shape change, that's important. I often don't realize this, even myself on dieting, until I'm past that point. And I'm like, oh, that change I noticed did happen. And what tends to happen with fat loss is it's not a linear progression, right? You don't drop half a pound, half a pound, half a pound. What I typically notice is that people will be stagnant for a week, two weeks, and then boom, they'll have a significant two, three, four pound drop at once. Then they'll be stagnant again for a little bit. I have a lot of theories on this. I've discussed them in other videos, but the idea here is that fat loss is not linear. And if you don't 
just allow the scale to dictate your success, you're going to be much more likely to succeed. Now, the other thing that I mentioned here was the calorie range, 300 calories. One thing I'll do with some clients that are struggling with fat loss that are a little bit more flexible with their diet. Yes, I'm a believer in flexible dieting, but at a certain point, choosing to eat the same foods for a few days in a row is really going to allow for some consistency with digestion, with sodium intake, and really be specific with your calories. If you're eating out a lot, those calorie ranges can, can vary even from what you see. Same thing with nutrition labels. However, there is far less variance if you are actually preparing your meals. That is the only foolproof way, in my mind, to guarantee success. So when I have a client that's like, nothing's working, I'm like, okay, here's a meal plan. Comment below if you'd like a free meal plan from me, because maybe I can help you guys out. Here is a meal plan. And what I'd like to do is just have you eat this for three days, the same thing, follow the plan, and then check back in. Lo and behold, 95% of the time, that was the key. However, let's just say that doesn't work. Say your 1800 calories are very accurate. You follow a meal plan of 1800 calories of food that you prepare for a week and nothing happens. What do we have now? We have data. We have data that we have to start to listen to. I would love to tell everybody watching this video that you can eat 3000 calories a day and sleep on the couch and lose body fat. Body fat does not care about what you want. Okay. Our bodies are predetermined. We don't have the ability to <laughs> determine what's going to be successful from person to person, genetic differences, history of dieting all come into play. So as a coach, when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with a client, I have to be able to decide, okay, is this fact or fiction? Are you actually stalled or are you just incorrectly tracking or not being aware of what's going on in your body? So when I can get this raw data, sometimes I'll say this, the calories are going to be lower than expected and the activity is going to be higher than expected to get progress. However, once you get some progress going, that's when we can reach your goal and get your calories back up and get your cardio back down. Fat loss can be very challenging. Maintaining fat loss is not nearly as challenging. I noticed this with my competitors. I noticed this with myself. Getting things moving, the momentum, sometimes you got to be more aggressive than you expect, but you have the ability, once you get the body fat off, of maintaining it with much less effort. Okay. Hopefully this helps you out. Comment below, guys, if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you tomorrow.